Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap and this is the 15 inch Microsoft Surface Book 2. And I honestly think it's the best all round laptop you can buy right now. With a smart design, beautiful color accurate screen, the best keyboard and precision touchpad you'll find on a Windows laptop and powerful specs including an 8th Gen i7 and GTX 1060. However, there's one problem, and that is the price. The 15 inch starts at £2,350, or $2,500. And if you want this one with the 512 gigabyte SSD, you're gonna have to pay another 400 on top of that, which is crazy eye-watering prices. Not only that, but compared to the 13 inch Surface Book 2, this is £850 more, nearly $1,000 more. So how can Microsoft possibly justify that kind of price? Should you go for the 15 or, here's one I made earlier, the 13 inch Surface Book 2 and is it worth the money? Okay, so it's expensive, but it's almost the exact same price as the Apple MacBook Pro 15 and people seem to give that a pass because, well, it's Apple, so of course it's expensive. So other high-end laptops like the MacBook Pro 15 and the Dell XPS 15 notebook are great. This can do one thing that they can't and that is with a press of a button, detach the screen, hopefully, yep, there we go, and use it as a full 15 inch Windows 10 tablet, which is just insane. And actually the whole thing is surprisingly light and easy to use for, as I say, a 15 inch tablet. It's got the processor and the RAM inside of here, and it will last a good five or six hours by itself without the base. So if you're one of those people who like to go into a meeting holding a, uh, a tablet like this, making notes, pretending you're really important, or maybe you think you're good at art, uh, or maybe you are good at art, who knows? This could be quite cool. For everyone else, I'm not really sure. Click on the poll at the top right to vote whether you think this feature, having a tablet like this, is actually useful, because presumably we are paying a bit of a premium, not least in terms of the R&D and engineering that goes into this to make this possible. I have to say though, beyond showing people that it does it, I've never actually used it myself. What I do tend to use more often is putting it in stand mode. So I put the screen on, which is a really weird thing when the keyboard is there. Put it in stand mode and then you can watch movies or uh, maybe even give presentations on it. So what kind of people would actually buy a laptop like this? Well, honestly, people like me, video editors, content creators, people who need a color accurate screen, some amount of portability so I can take this on the road with me and work, but at the same time, solid performance so I can edit photos and most importantly for me, comfortably edit 4K video. Although what stops it from replacing my desktop PC and maybe even my current Dell XPS 15 is the fact that the Surface Book 2 uses Intel's 15 watt U series of 8th gen processors as opposed to say the 45 watt i7 7700HQ in the XPS 15 and MacBook Pro 15. So CPU intensive tasks may suffer a bit, but it also maxes out at 16 gigs of RAM, which is more than enough for most people, but serious editors or 3D renderers would appreciate a 32 gig option. While I'm talking about areas for improvement, you'll notice that the headphone jack is here, which is handy when you're using it in tablet mode. It means you can still plug your headphones in when you're using it as a tablet, but when you're using it in a laptop mode like this, the headphone cable will dangle over the uh, keyboard and the base, which is a bit weird, a bit annoying, not the end of the world. Not only that, but it is a surprisingly big machine. It's quite chunky for a 15 inch laptop. Now that is largely due to that famous fulcrum hinge, which is a really innovative solution from a design perspective because the tablet screen itself has the processor, RAM, storage, and a battery as well in it. So it is pretty heavy for a screen and therefore, Microsoft's had to extend the base of it using this hinge so it doesn't tip the laptop over because it's relatively heavy for a screen. And it doesn't. The screen itself is still a little wobbly. It's less so than the original Surface Book, a lot less. And I don't really notice it as an issue. It's still a little bit wobble, but importantly, it doesn't tip over because of the weight. But the hinge combined with the relatively chunky bezel for a 2018 super high-end laptop and the three by two aspect ratio screen means that overall it is quite a big 15 inch laptop. So why not just buy the 13 inch model and save yourself a thousand dollars in the process? Well, there's a couple of differences. Obviously the main one is the screen size. If you're using this all the time, then you'll really appreciate the, I'm gonna have to say it, the extra screen real estate, I hate that phrase, of the 15 inch model. 
but beyond that, there's a couple of differences in terms of specs. They both can come with i7 processors, the same one, and up to 16 gigs of RAM, but that is the only and therefore entry-level model of the 15. But the biggest difference in terms of hardware and components is the graphics card. The 13-inch comes with an NVIDIA GTX 1050, whereas the 15-inch comes with a much more powerful 1060, which on paper is around twice as fast. In Premiere Pro, they can both edit 4K video, although make sure you use them with the power connected, as the graphics card only kicks in and makes it smooth enough to use when plugged in. So to test the difference between the 13 and 15 inch models, I exported a 3 minute 11 second 4K video, which took 17 minutes and 3 seconds on the 13 inch versus 16 minutes and 11 seconds on the 15. So it was just over a minute quicker, which means it's actually just 5% faster but there's a much bigger difference when it comes to gaming. In Rise of the Tomb Raider at Full HD with high settings, the 13-inch scored 42 FPS versus 70 FPS on the 15. That's a 66% increase in frame rate. And it was a similar story in Ghost Recon Wildlands, 33 FPS versus 53 FPS, which incredibly is the same 66% increase. And gaming with higher settings or at high resolutions is much better on the 15 inch model as the GTX 1060 has six gigs of VRAM, three times that of the 1050. But impressively, both laptops stay cool and quiet throughout, not something I could say about the XPS or MacBook. So yeah, as you'd expect, the 15 inch is more powerful, especially when it comes to gaming, although not really that much different when it comes to editing in Premiere Pro. But where I think Microsoft have missed a trick and I'm a little bit disappointed, is that while both these have a USB-C port, neither support Thunderbolt 3. And I think that could have been the best solution, buying, say, the cheaper and more portable 13-inch Surface Book 2, and then when you get home, you know, or the office, plugging it into an external graphics card. I'm not really sure how many people actually buy those, but it's great to have the option, so you could connect it up to a 1070 or 1080 via the USB-C port. So because they don't support eGPUs, if you want the best performance, particularly for gaming, but anything really that would use a graphics card, a more powerful graphics card, then the 15 inch one is the way forward. But it's the screen that is really a standout feature of the Surface Book 2 15. With a 3240 by 2160 resolution, it's not quite 4K, it's actually just 600 pixels off, but it's still one of the nicest displays I've ever seen. And you can set the screen to sRGB mode for the most color accurate colors ideal for photo and video editing. Or switch it to enhanced mode for more vivid colors and combined with the surprisingly punchy speakers, it's great for watching videos and movies. Microsoft says you'll get 17 hours of battery life. In the real world, you're looking at around 10 hours, which is still very good, especially considering the high resolution screen. The equivalent 4K Dell XPS 15, for example, gets about half that. Charging speed is pretty average, 0-100% takes about 3 hours altogether with the 100W AC charger bundled with the laptop. If you've got any money left after buying the Surface Book 2, you could always invest in a Surface Pen or a Surface Dial peripheral, which would probably come in handy for artists and graphic designers. The slightly thicker bezel means the webcam is as it should be on the top of the screen, unlike say the XPS 15. And for me, the webcam quality on the Surface Book 2 is among the best, if not the best quality I've seen on any laptop before. So if you're into your Skype video calls, or your fancy business video meetings, this will be a ideal laptop. And it also supports Windows Hello, so you can unlock the laptop with your face, which actually works really fast. So that is the Surface Book 2, a ridiculously good, but also ridiculously expensive, super high-end, two-in-one hybrid laptop, all singing, all dancing, bells and whistles, make your breakfast in the morning, everything you can think of, all in one laptop. It's a, it's a great laptop, but it's expensive. It's not perfect, and not everyone needs a detachable 15-inch tablet, and I think it also may be worth waiting a few months for a laptop like a refreshed XPS 15 notebook or the 2018 MacBook Pro that comes with a more powerful Intel 8th Gen HQ series of chips for more intensive tasks. But I would still highly recommend it if you can afford it. Although, of course, that is a big if. So that's what I think, but what do you reckon? Would you consider buying the Surface Book 215? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you want to find out more about this, I will put links in the description below so you can go and check those out. If you like this video and you want to see more laptop reviews from me, then do click that like and subscribe button below. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat. Thanks for watching.